Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the Radio Master Zorro. We're going to talk about upgrading Edge TX and Express LRS. Keep in mind, if you have a 4 in 1 or a CC2500 chip, the Express LRS portion does not apply to you, so don't try it. This only works for Express LRS equipped radios. We're going to start out by upgrading Edge TX first, and I'm going to show you two methods to do this. The first method will be online using the new tool buddy.edgetx.org. That'll be method number one. The second method will be by putting the binary on the radio itself and flashing from the radio. So I'm going to show you both ways just in case something doesn't work. Before we get started, though, I have to warn you guys, back up your radios, okay? Before you do anything else, back up your radio. The good news is that the Radio Master Zorro comes from the factory with a version of 2.6 prior to the main release, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue to make this upgrade, but just in case, make sure you back everything up. You also don't have to worry about the URLs. I'll have links to everything in the description. And one last thing before I get started, I need to say thanks to Radio Master for sending me this Zorro for review. Thank you, Radio Master. If you guys are in the market for Radio Master gear, I'll have some links in the description where you can buy that as well. All right, let's get into it. We'll start out by loading up buddy.edgetx.org in our browser, and the firmware version is pre-populated to say EdgeTX Santa. The next thing we'll do is make sure the radio is turned off and we will connect a USB-C cable, one end to your computer, the other end to the top port on the radio. Now when you plug that in, you won't get any visual indicator on the radio itself, but you will hear a bong noise on your computer indicating you have a connection. So make sure you listen for that on your computer. The next thing we'll do is select the radio model. I'll go down to Zorro. There is no difference in Edge TX firmware for the Express LRS or CC2500 or the 4-in-1 module. They're all the same. So just pick Radio Master Zorro. The next thing we'll do is we're gonna download the binary. So I'm gonna download that first and we're gonna save that on the desktop. And you'll see here that I get a little binary file right there on the desktop. We've got that now. And the next thing we'll do is flash via USB. The reason I did the download first is because I'm also going to show you how to flash from the radio. If you're just going to flash from buddy.edgetx.org, you can skip that step. All right, the next thing to do is click flash via USB. And in my case, since I've already connected this radio to my computer before, it sees the device. If you don't have this, all you have to do is click on add device and you want to look for an item called STM bootloader. So there's STM bootloader. We'll just hit connect and that highlights it and lets you talk, lets your computer talk to the radio. Next, you hit next. And remember what I said about backing your stuff up, make sure you're backed up. Finally, we'll hit start flashing. And I'm going to let this go ahead and do its thing and talk to you a little bit. And I want to let it run so you see exactly how long it takes and what the process looks like. What's going on really is the radio is in, call, in a mode called DFU mode, and that allows the computer to, to write to the storage space or the memory on the radio where the firmware resides. The other thing about Buddy that I want to explain is that I've talked to the developers, and it's my understanding that they do plan on adding some enhancements to Buddy, including compile time options. So for example, if you want to get rid of that heli tab, you can select no heli. If you don't want to use Lua, you can turn on no Lua. You can also disable GVARs. Those are all things that are coming. Keep in mind, those are all real-time compile options. So it's not there on Buddy yet, but my understanding is it is a feature set that they are planning to add to buddy.edgetx.org. Okay, we're almost done with the flash. It kind of wraps up real fast after this. And once that's done, we'll get into the other method. Okay, I've seen this before where the flashing process gets to 100% and it doesn't finish on the web browser. So you should normally see a couple more icons. It'll say flashing done, everything looks good. And for that reason, this is why I'm going to show you also how to flash on the radio itself. So I can tell you that it did flash the firmware. It's, it is 100%. It disconnected from the computer, and you can hear that. So once that's done, the DFU connection is closed, and it's done. I think this is just a hang up with the website. But if that makes you uncomfortable, and I can understand that, I'm going to cancel out of that, disconnect the radio, and I'm going to show you right now that it'll boot up. It is flashed. So there you go. It, it, it booted up and everything looks okay. It's just an issue with the website, I believe. Okay, but let's, let's cover how to do it via SD card as well. So I've already got the radio powered on. With that done, I'm just going to connect it to the computer and I'll select USB storage as the option. 
And when I do that, I should get a couple of windows on my computer that pop up, one of them being the USB drive that contains the folder structure. You wanna look for one called, now we wanna be very careful here. There's two drives that, that show up. One says Zorro and it says firmware bin and firmware text. That is not the place you wanna be. Close that window and get out of there. You don't mess around in that one. You're looking for one that's got this kind of folder structure. It'll say backup, EEPROM, firmware logs, that kind of thing. Click on firmware and notice there's already a couple of files in here. They've got some multi-protocol stuff in there. They've got the 4 one the CC2500, and they've got the original binary for the Edge TX load that came on the radio. But we're gonna copy the one from the desktop that we downloaded earlier from Buddy. We're gonna drop that in the radio and there it is, Zorro v2.6.0.bin. Okay, so once we've done that, you can disconnect it from your computer and then we'll shut the radio off and we're gonna go into bootloader mode by holding the two trim switches inboard and pressing the power button. And when we do that, we are in bootloader mode. And I know the screen is washing it out. I apologize, I don't have any way to control the brightness on this. But here, here it is, you're in this bootloader mode and you'll see two options. One says write firmware, the other says exit. We're gonna select write firmware and you do that with the scroll dial. That's how you choose the options. So once you find the one you want, click on write firmware and you'll see that folder that we just worked in on the computer. So see that option right there that says Zorro v2.6.0.bin, that's the one I just put on that card. So we're gonna select that, and then we hold the enter key down or the jog dial down to flash it. So we're gonna hold the enter key down, and while we're doing that, it'll start the writing process, which is right there. Okay, when you're finished, you'll get a a notice that says writing is complete and once that happens you can hit the return button and then exit and when you do that you go right into edge tx okay i'm going to tell you guys that that's the method that i prefer and the reason is because it takes other elements out of the equation that could potentially create errors and i know that's the way most of the developers do it too they put the firmware on the card they go into bootloader bootloader mode and they just write the firmware out to me that method is much preferable over any other but for those of you who are nervous about that kind of thing buddy does work even though we saw an error on the website okay we'll just validate our firmware by pressing the system button and we'll hit page left one time and you can see we've got edge tx zoro 2.6.0 and the date is 2201.24 the next thing we need to do is upgrade the internal Express LRS module. We'll do that by going to the Express LRS GitHub. Don't worry, links in the description so you can get there. Bring up that website and over here on the right hand side under releases, you'll see an option called Express LRS Configurator 1.3.8. Just click on that and that'll bring you down to the list of assets. And we're looking, look for the version that's appropriate for you. If you're Apple, you want the D image. If you're Linux, you want the RPM. If you're Windows, you just want an EXE or an executable. So we'll click on the configurator setup. And once we download that, we'll be able to install it. Once you have the Express LRS configurator downloaded, go ahead and run the install and let it install, follow the prompts, install for all users, whatever makes you happy on your computer, but make sure you just run the install process. We'll click next, let it use the default location, that's fine. After the install is complete, go ahead and run the Express LRS configurator. It will make a link to the configurator on your desktop for you as well. Okay, so now we're in the configurator. We're almost there, rounding third, heading for home. Under releases, select the release you want. I'm gonna choose the latest one, which is 2.2. .2. And under target, we're gonna look for Radio Master. So scroll down and look for Radio Master 2.4 gigahertz. That's the one you want. Under device, use the Radio Master Zorro 2400TX. Remember, we're flashing the transmitter. Then you have to come down here and choose your options. Under regulatory domain for me, I'll use ISM 2400 because I'm not in the EU. In my case, I'm not going to use a binding phrase. There's a long story behind that because I'm doing videos. So I'm not going to use a binding phrase just yet. But if you want a binding phrase, here's where you enter it. And then choose your other options based on what you think is important. On the Wi-Fi interval, I don't see any reason to wait for 60 seconds. I like to set mine to 20. And then, as you can see in my configurator, in past launches, I've already configured my home SSID. You can enter that here along with your home Wi-Fi password. And the reason you do that is because if the device has a Wi-Fi chip in it, what it'll do is connect to your house router and you can flash the device directly from configurator over your home Wi-Fi network. Okay, the very last thing we need to do before we hit the go button is we're gonna plug the radio back in 
and you should be prompted with three options. One of them is joystick, the next one is storage, and the bottom one is serial. You're gonna click on serial, USB serial debug. When you do that, listen to your computer for that bong noise. You need to hear a bong noise. Once you hear that bong noise, then you know your computer has opened up a serial port via USB to the radio, and you should be able to build and flash from there. So we'll click build and flash. Now I've already downloaded and run Express LRS Configurator, so I don't have to go through the entire build environment setup. If you've never done this before, you probably will see a lot of stuff and it will take a lot of time, maybe four, three, four minutes. I've already gone through this, so I'm not downloading the entire platform IO or PIO build, build environment. So if this is new to you, don't worry about it. The Edge, the Express LRS configurator knows what to do, and it will install the appropriate software on your computer for you in order to build your firmware. So if you're not aware, what's happening is the firmware is being compiled on your computer real time. Okay, when you see this writing message, writing at, and the percentages, that's a good sign. That means the software has been able to communicate with the internal module and you are actually writing firmware to the radio transmitter. Okay, when you're done, you should see success. And then update Lua, make sure to update the Lua script on your radio. You can download the Lua script and after you reconnect your radio, just put it on your desktop somewhere. I've already done this, but here's the Express LRS V2 Lua. Just put it somewhere you can remember, save it to your desktop. And then once you're, everything is done, you can click back, close the configurator, disconnect your radio from the computer, reconnect the radio to your computer, and you should be prompted again on the radio for joystick storage or serial. In my case, I want to hit storage this time. And when I do that, I should get a pop-up. Remember, we don't, we don't pay any attention to this one that says firmware bin or text. Close that. And then we want to go into scripts and then tools. And you'll see a file in here called ELRS v2. Get rid of that one. Get rid of the Lua compiled version. So get rid of that and then just drop this ELRS v2 on that folder, on the tools folder and let it go. After you've installed the Lua script, we'll do two things. The first thing we'll do is press the model button and we'll hit page right and then scroll to the left. And you wanna look for the internal RF module and have it in mode crossfire. So that's what the radio uses to communicate with the internal module is the crossfire protocol. That just makes sure that the module is turned on. So after you've done that, you should be able to hit the system button and scroll to your Express LRS Lua. And once you find that, just to hit the enter button on the jog dial, and there you go, you're now in and talking to the Express LRS module. So you can set your options like TX power and whether or not you're using dynamic mode, plus all the other goodies that you can change with Express LRS. That wraps up my video on how to upgrade your Radio Master Zorro. In this video, you saw how to upgrade the EdgeTX firmware via buddy.edgetx.org and via the bootloader method by putting the firmware on the SD card. And then you also learned how to upgrade your internal Express LRS module using the Express LRS configurator. I hope you found the information useful, and if you did, please hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.